When we think about important moments in our lives, we all probably think about different things. It could be either personal or professional, highly hilarious or completely heinous. These times in our lives are the building blocks that make us who we are, and they keep us humble. Being human is awesome. But these next videos are a mixed bag of sights unseen that will have your jaw on the floor. From fun to freaky, terrific to traumatic, and everything in between. 15 rare events you'd be lucky to see once in your life. Human Pinball Pinball is a type of arcade game in which a player uses paddles, called flippers, to manipulate one or more balls inside a pinball machine. A glass-covered cabinet containing a playfield populated with lights, targets, bumpers, ramps, and various other objects. The primary objective of the game is to score as many points as possible by hitting targets and making various shots before all balls drain into an exit usually situated at the bottom of the playfield. However, this giant pinball machine? Can we all agree this looks like so much fun? This is human pinball. Check out Latvian freerunner and Red Bull Art of Motion champion Pasha Petkins as he takes on an actual life-size pinball machine. This huge scale and truly unique free-running feat involved the creation of a wall that was 52 feet high with a 75-foot high length tilted at an angle of 45 degrees to create near-impossible angles, jumps, and catches. The angle of the wall is based on a bridge in Pasha's homeland, Latvia, where he honed his craft as one of the greatest free-runners in history. Following a seven-week set build, Human Pinball was filmed in a grueling three-week shoot where Pasha's physical capabilities were tested to the limit on the daunting wall. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. Looking at this image, we get the impression we're looking at something we're not supposed to, something top secret even. Anytime you see military vehicles and troops wandering around an unidentified object that appears to have crash landed on this hillside, who wouldn't be looking over their shoulder and asking, is this for real? It's very X-Files, don't you agree? Maybe we were just at the right place at the right time to go unnoticed in this confusing scene. Try to stay that way. Or maybe there wasn't a crash at all and this mysterious circular disc was shot down by the military. So many questions. It's better to let our imagination run wild anyway. But what do you think? Get the conversation started in the comments and use the hashtag sweet topic. <laughs> Motorcycle Miracle Finnish rider Nicholas Aho pulled off a spectacular finish in the Moto3 Grand Prix race in Assen, Holland. And make no mistake, this iron-wheeled motorcyclist has pulled off one of the greatest saves witnessed in motorsport history. The 20-year-old rider lost control on one of the last turns of the track and was thrown out of his seat. Incredibly, he managed to keep hold of the bike. Check out his next-level recovery skills. This Moto Master even saves it from crashing into a trackside wall. Despite finishing the race quite literally on his knees, he still achieved 17th place, but the young rider was surprisingly modest about the dramatic save, which successfully stole the limelight from the race winner. He added, was a scary moment, but I wanted to finish the race in any way, and I think this was a pretty unique way. Road racing is a form of motorsport racing held on paved road surfaces. Originally, road races were held almost entirely on public roads. However, public safety concerns eventually led to most races being held inside. But as you can see, the danger is no different. He may have lost control, but he recovered brilliantly. And the crowd loved it. Jet Ski Skydive Jeff Provenzano is one of the pioneers of the high-speed, high-stakes skydiving discipline of swooping or canopy piloting. He's best known for his talent for inventing never-before-seen aerobatics like the jet ski skydive at the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series at Possum Kingdom Lake in Texas. His stunt encompasses several disciplines, all involving the flight of a skydiving parachute with total control. And the skills allow him to perform crowd-pleasing tricks like this. It's like driving a Ferrari as a parachute, he says. First, he jumps from an altitude of 5,000 feet. Everything up until this point was rather standard. Down below, there are so many boats, and it's phenomenal and amazing to see from above, like diving into a postcard. After his jump from his plane, he did a standard 630-degree turn, going incredibly fast. The jet ski driver was exactly where they planned, 
and as the skydiver got closer to the water, he hammered on the throttle to get to the rendezvous point. Their speeds begin to match. There's a moment of hesitation, and you think that Provenzano is going to take over. For a fraction of a split second, you think he's going to bail to his side and land in the water. But nope. Then the skydiver makes a small correction, and then boom. Just like that, the skydiving pioneer touched down on the back of this moving jet ski. <laughs> Fly like an eagle. Wingsuits are sometimes referred to as Birdman suits, and you're about to see why. They literally allow people to fly like an eagle, but you might find yourself holding your breath as you watch this. You gotta see Italian base jumper Uli Emanuel pulling off a ridiculously difficult wingsuit flight through a tiny six-foot cave. The video opens with the enthusiastic base jumper hiking up a rugged mountain in Switzerland. Pulling on his blue wingsuit, the daredevil adjusts his goggles before taking time to make all the necessary adjustments and calculations one final time before the jump. This is not your ordinary challenge. With one big leap, he jumps off the edge of the mountainside. Once he jumps and spreads his arms, his wingsuit kicks into action. Making a slight turn, the daredevil lines himself up for a near impossible flight through the cave. Look how close the daredevil comes to crashing into the rock face, and with laser-like precision, he glides right through the hole in the rock. Lucky for us, he records himself flying over all sorts of beautiful terrain. This footage, captured on a GoPro, shows the true scale of his challenge. As you can see, there's no margin for error. Swooping over the mountainside, the jubilant daredevil has to be particularly proud of a remarkable stunt like this. Robot Cheerleader If a robot can dance at halftime at a football game, then we're living in the future. And recently, a robot really did perform at halftime during a football game. Spot took to the University of Missouri's 4-0 field as college football's Missouri Tigers faced off against the Tennessee Volunteers. The robot from Boston Dynamics performed with the marching band and the Golden Girls Dance Squad. Its moves are something else, right? The halftime performance allowed Spot to show off his dancing skills in public once again, this time with the Tigers halftime cheerleading squad. The machine's animal-like behavior regularly electrifies crowds at tech conferences, and like other Boston Dynamics robots, Spot is an internet sensation whose moves amass millions of views. And now we know this dog can bust a move. Spot's dance routine was a bit out of the ordinary because the robot is designed to traverse surfaces more challenging than a football field. Its built-in software allows it to navigate environments, avoid objects, recognize things, and carry out tasks. For example, companies are already using Spot for various projects. But even a dog robot needs to dance, and this robot cheerleader did not disappoint. Snow Kayaking Believed to have been invented by whitewater kayakers in the Alps as a winter alternative when the rivers were frozen under snow, the sport of snow kayaking was born. The first recorded official race was held in Austria in 2002. The first snow kayaking world championships were held in the same resort five years later. Racers are held in similar manners as snowboarding that are known as boulder cross. Snow kayaking is typically done in the backcountry and occasionally at resorts and ski areas. Typically, either playboats or creek boats are used depending on the style the kayaker prefers. Although personal flotational devices are not worn, helmets and paddles are often used to help for a sweeter ride through the white powder. So, instead of letting your summer kayaking memories fade away with each shovel full of snow, now you can use the snow-filled winter to test the limits of your best kayak. All you'll need is a hill and some snow. The only downside to kayaking down the hill or a mountain is having to drag your recreational kayak uphill. But for professional extreme kayakers like this, that's part of the fun. Over the past decade, however, snow kayaking competitions have often been staged on indoor snow. But come on, it's all about the mountains for us. <laughs> Mountain Specters If you stand on a hill that's partially enveloped in mist and in such a position that you can see your shadow in it, you might just get the illusion that a shadow of a person is seen dimly through the mist. Named after the German mountain on which it was first noted, a Brocken Specter, aka Mountain Specter, is a large shadow of an observer cast onto the clouds. But it's actually you. No one is really there. The illusion is that this person or specter is gigantic and at a considerable distance away from you. 
The mountain specter is the magnified shadow of an observer cast upon clouds opposite the sun's direction. You can see the halo-like rings of colored light forming a glory when uniformly sized water droplets and clouds refract and backscatter sunlight. So it distorts perception and can make the shadow appear to move as the clouds vary and shift. This all combines to make the rather disorienting effect of a giant shadow moving in the distance. The phenomenon can appear on any misty mountainside or cloud bank, even when seen from an airplane. But the frequent fogs and low altitude accessibility of the Brocken, a peak in the Harz Mountains in Germany, have created a local legend from which the phenomenon draws its name. Fire NATO Firefighters have captured the moment this fire NATO spun out in a plastics factory in Derbyshire, England, reaching a height of more than 50 feet. They're created when the rising heat from a fire pulls in smoke and fire, creating a rotation vortex that spins dangerously above the blaze. They can contain tornadic wind speeds that form when a smoke plume behaves like a thunderstorm. They're usually 33 to 164 feet tall, several feet wide, and last only a few minutes. Some, however, can be more than a half mile tall, contain wind speeds over 120 miles per hour, and persist for more than 20 minutes. As for the fire NATO, the fire had also spread to a small site building and a number of forklift trucks at the property. Fire crews worked hard to prevent any further spread and brought the fire to the safest and quickest conclusion. However, the blaze only affected stacked plastic pallets ordinarily used for making crates for supermarkets. It took them 12 hours to get the fire under control. Bosses at the factory, which makes the bread trays for the whole of the UK, said the outside storage unit had been completely gutted by the blaze. Thankfully, no injuries were reported, but a huge black smoke could be seen for hundreds of miles. <laughs> Glowing Mushrooms have you ever seen numerous green glows like this on the side of a path when you wander around in the woods at night? We certainly have. This looks as if you're in a clip from a fantasy movie. So, where can we see these beautiful glowing mushrooms? In Japan, of course. More than 10 types of glowing fungi have been discovered so far. They grow on tree trunks, fallen trees, or other objects. Some fungi glow very brightly, others are faint, but the effect is still marvelous either way. The luminescence of fungi is based on the antioxidant hesperidin, reacting to an enzyme of mushrooms specific to luminescent mushrooms. However, the reason why luminescent fungi were involved to be luminous is yet to be unveiled. A little island in the Pacific Ocean, miles away from Tokyo, is known as the Sanctuary of Glowing Mushrooms, where many species of glowing mushrooms can be seen at once. But clusters of them are commonly seen all over Japan from late summer to autumn growing on fallen beech trees or deadwood. It's like something out of the fictional movie Avatar, where the forest literally glows. These mushrooms are naturally solar powered. It really puts the fun back in fun guy. <laughs> Longest tongue in the world. Is it us, or do these creatures look like something prehistoric? These animals are often called scaly anteaters, which is an appropriate description for them even though they're not closely related to anteaters. They're called pangolins. Like anteaters, they have long snouts and even longer tongues that they use to slurp up ants and termites. Unlike humans and many other animals, the pangolin's tongue is connected not in its mouth, but at the bottom of its rib cage. When extended, their tongues are longer than their bodies and head combined. Some are over 15 inches long. Their tongues are something else. These animals are insectivores, which means their diet consists completely of insects. They don't have teeth, and they mostly eat ants and termites, although they'll eat a few other invertebrates as well. A single pangolin can consume up to 20,000 ants a day. That's about 73 million ants a year. They use their long claws to open up ant and termite hills, then use their sticky tongue to slurp up insects and swallow them whole. With a tongue like that, why not show it off? Real-life Pokemon It's been compared to a fluffy dog, and some say it looks like a real-life Pokemon character. Others say it could be a Power Rangers villain. Needless to say, the Venezuelan Poodle Moth has taken the internet by storm. The name derives from a comparison of its physical appearance to a cross between a moth and a poodle. It was first photographed in 2009 by zoologist Dr. Arthur Anker in Venezuela. The physical appearance and lack of actual information has led to its existence being doubted as a hoax on the internet. 
The first thing to emphasize is that this poodle moth is no phony concoction like the jackalope, dogger pillar, or chubacabra. Its cute, furry, scaly look is totally in line with what's expected for a neotropical ornamental moth. However, subsequent expeditions to the region have been unable to spot the moth again. The Venezuelan poodle moth is even more bizarre looking than your run-of-the-mill muslin moth. However, if this showy critter is indeed a neotropical relative of the muslin moth, it's much more benign. Such moths feed on plants and cause little trouble. They're also relatively small. The moth's wingspan amounts to little more than an inch. They're extremely rare as well, so it's highly unlikely you'll see this Pokemon moth out on your porch anytime soon. Deep Sea Aliens This video of an otherworldly sea creature is quite mysterious. It surfaced on the internet, leaving the netizens completely mind-boggled. Its physical attributes are not similar to any of these known species. The video begins with the object floating in the water. As the video progresses, we see the object slowly transform into a black ball-like shape. After some time, it opens up from the round structure and then elongates. It starts to glow in stripes. Slowly, it can be seen spreading its fin-like structures. Lights of different colors can be seen traveling through the creature's changing forms. Towards the end of the video, the object gets caught up in the output from the rove thrusters. It majestically drifts, shapeshifts, glows, majestically does a couple cute spins, and then gets brutally ripped apart and tossed into the void. R.I.P. Alien of the Deep Blue Sea the video has been captured by a remotely operating vehicle at a depth of 3,753 feet in the Indian Ocean. You never know what you're going to find when you go that deep. Stunned by the video, netizens took over the comment section, and since being uploaded, the video has managed to gather millions of views. And we can see why. Maybe outer space is not the only place aliens are reported to exist. They could be living in our oceans. Bioluminescent beaches. Have you ever been to the ocean and swam in the water at night? Occasionally, in various parts of the world, beaches and the water along the shore can literally glow. It's called bioluminescence. It's when the sea sparkles in neon blue or green or even red. Us humans can witness this natural phenomenon when there's a lot of bioluminescence in the water, usually from an algal bloom of plankton. The sea will glow when it's disturbed by a wave breaking or a splash in the water at night. It's the result of a reaction between a compound that occurs naturally in some organisms. And this is what dolphins look like as they swim through the shimmering waves. Recently, photographer Patrick Coyne captured an amazing light show while aboard a whale-watching vessel in Newport Beach. Glowing dolphins. In the rare footage, two dolphins swim through this bizarre place, a type of plankton that release a burst of light when activated, even by the slightest touch. No. This isn't a scene out of an animated movie, rather it's a spectacular show put on by a few dolphins and some glow-in-the-dark plankton. Fire and Ice It felt like a music festival, says a college student who's traveled to Iceland twice recently to see this, a volcano in Iceland. The crater spews out bright red, bubbling lava onto the rocky valley below. An eruption hadn't occurred in this part of the country in 6,000 years. The volcano, which started erupting on March 19, 2021, is still going, and it has become a reason to party. At the site, locals and tourists are eating, drinking, and mingling with strangers. The eruptions began after thousands of small earthquakes in the area woke the sleeping giant. It produced more than 10 million square feet of lava, with some plumes soaring 300 feet into the air. The site was initially blocked off to tourists, but recently people were allowed to venture up towards the spewing volcano. To no one's surprise, the tourism industry is benefiting from it too. Pictures online show people smiling and posing near the dangerous mountain as it spat out hot ash and burning lava. Vendors, including one selling fish and chips, have now set up shop to feed the hungry revelers. There was this one guy selling lamb soup out of his trunk, said one tourist. Some tourists even roast marshmallows on the hot lava. Fire Falls the Yosemite Firefall was a summertime event that began in 1872 in which burning hot embers were spilled from the top of a glacier point in Yosemite National Park to the valley 3,000 feet below, and it continued for almost a century. From a distance, it appeared as a flowing waterfall, except it's made of fire. The owners of the Glacier Park Hotel here conducted the firefall and yelled, 
let the fire fall each night as a signal to start pushing the embers over. This tradition was performed at 9 p.m. seven nights a week, but a natural version does exist called the Horsetail Falls at Yosemite National Park glows orange as light from the setting sun hits the water at just the right angle. The waterfall in California plunges about 1,500 feet and almost looks as if it could be a lava spilling from a volcano. It happens during every sunset around the second week of February when the sky is clear. Thousands of people travel to the national park to catch a glimpse of the phenomenon which lasts for just a few minutes before the sun moves. The OG man-made firefall ended in 1968 when the director of the National Park Service ordered it to stop because it was not a natural event, but either version is a sight to behold. This natural phenomenon is often referred to as the firefall, a name that pays homage to the old school Yosemite firefall. Feeling lucky yet? We hope so. These videos prove that seeing stuff like this only once is never enough. Want more? Make sure you like and subscribe and share the good luck with all your friends.